Grace and joy to you. Family, we are grateful that you are present and you are back for the second session of our 2819 Urban Evangelism Conference. And if you were with us for session one, I know that you were blessed by our beloved speaker, preacher, evangelist, lecturer, professor, Dr. Manuel Scott Jr. What a word we had talking about doing evangelism in the age of COVID-19. Oh my beloved, oh my, what a word we received. Well, prepare your hearts because we're going further now in this conference, this time of equipping. And this conference design is that one of the most neglected tasks of the church today is that of evangelism. Thousands upon thousands are lost and on their way to a burning eternity with no escape, beloved. As the hands and feet of Christ, we are called to pull these souls from the fire. There's a great urgency for this mission. We dwell in times of chaos where the true essentials of evangelism are sliding into dangerous trends of pseudo-evangelical efforts, leading to false commitments to Christ and his church. In order to fulfill the Great Commission, the church must be equipped to do so. Therefore, the Engelos Biblical Institute recognizes the urgency and the importance of these factors. Therefore, our mission is to stimulate evangelism in the local church. This conference this year, our goals are to encourage and equip the saints for effective service in urban evangelism, to develop creative strategies for evangelism and to facilitate personal and corporate evangelistic ideas. This session we are entering into now is titled Discipleship in the 21st Century. Once again, let me say that for you. We are talking about discipleship in the 21st century. And our beloved professor and teacher is none other than our beloved brother, Dr. Manuel Scott Jr. And we are so glad to have him here with us. He has been a blessing to us. And not only is he a corporate figure for the broader church of Jesus Christ, but he is a academic trained believer and follower, one who knows how to rightly divide the word of truth. And we are grateful today that he has taken the time to be with us. We are grateful also for his ministry that goes abroad. And he has ministered to some 12 various denominations and has preached and taught this great gospel in many a great place. So we're grateful today. And without any further ado, I'm gonna to bring to the podium at this time, our professor, lecturer, teacher, evangelist for the day, Manuel Scott Jr. Hear ye him. Thank you, Dr. Angelus. God be praised for you and the people of God. Uh, let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all of thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. It is again our Father and our God that we, your children, saints, and soldiers come in the most precious, powerful, and preeminent name we know. That is in the name of Jesus. We come, Lord God, saying thank you for your grace, mercy, and favor. In particular, we say thank you for this uh, Angelos Bible Institute presented by Dr. Angelus Wilson and the, and the good people of his congregation, uh, New Beginnings. We say thank you for his vision, his leadership. Thank you for his love and heart for evangelism, his love and heart for the lost. Continue to bless him, bless his every effort, bless his lovely family. Now, God, we ask that you would just have your way today. Have your way. You are welcome in this session. Have your way as we embark upon teaching on the importance of discipleship in the 21st century. Uh, we're so mindful of those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Forgive us now for all of our sins. And then, Heavenly Father, as your servants, most earnest request 
that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Certainly, my brothers and sisters, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We trust that all is well with you during this particular season. Let me immediately say thank you once again to Pastor Angelus Wilson uh, for inviting me to be a part of this great uh, uh, Angelos Bible Institute with an emphasis on evangelism. Uh, he is a, a very, very wonderful man of God, very gifted, very sincere, and I want him to uh, know in a very personal way that I appreciate his efforts. In fact, I admire them. He's certainly being a blessing uh, to the New Beginnings Church, to the community of Fresno, uh, and certainly to the kingdom of God. So I want him to know from the depths of my heart, I am most grateful. Now we're going to move into our second session entitled Discipleship for the 21st Century. And we shall begin with some very important quotes that I want you to think about. Um, I researched them, and they are so apropos for what we're trying to do today and even for these times. The first quote is from my late great father, and, and he says, we have paid more attention to the lost coin than we have to the lost sheep. The next quote, the proof of God's presence far outweighs the proof of his absence, and that's Mike Murdoch. And next quote, instead of being fishers of men, we become keepers of the aquarium, Papa E.V. Hill. Our next quote, changed lives are a church's greatest advertisement. And that's by Rick Warren. Our next quote, if we do not evangelize, we will soon fossilize. By the late great Dr. C.W. Clark. Next quote, every method of not evangelizing is wrong. By the late great Dr. Carl F. Henry. Our next quote. If we claim we preach a Canaan bound faith, then why are we arguing over who has the largest church in Egypt? By Jesse Jackson. I heard him uh, make that statement personally at the LA Ministers Conference many, many years ago. Our next quote by my favorite uh, Catholic uh, theologian, uh, Fulton Sheen, he says, nothing will be saved until souls are saved. Our next quote, first century evangelism was consistently a combination of word and deed. That's by C. Peter Wagner. And then our final quote, the church is the church only when it exists for others. By my favorite theologian, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Now, let's look at some popular myths about evangelism that need to die. The first myth, the pastor preacher is the only one who is supposed to witness to the lost and unsaved. That's a myth. Next myth, uh, that the Christian is saved just to celebrate the faith. No, no, that's a myth. For every Christian is saved to propagate the faith, to proclaim the faith, to promote the faith, Acts 1, verse 8. Here's another one, that there is only one standard way to witness. That's a myth. For the Christian soul winner, following the examples of Jesus and Paul, must be flexible according to the situation. 1 Corinthians 9, verses 19 through 22. That soul winning is only a weekly or monthly activity at best. That's a myth. For Christians are to witness every chance they get. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. All right. That a Christian can please God and be complete in the faith without witnessing. That's a myth. Read John chapter 14, verse 5. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Here's another one. That soul winning is just an activity of a Christian. That's a myth. For soul winning should be the lifestyle of a Christian. Matthew 5 and 16 clearly tells us, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your father who is in heaven. That soul winning should start among people 
or you do not know. That's the myth. For soul winning should start in the Jerusalem of your own home, among your own relatives and friends. Acts 1 and 8, John 1 verse 41. That soul winning is a one-time encounter with the lost, and that's it. Saints, that's a myth. True soul winning always involves follow-up. Be sure to read Luke chapter 10, verses 33 through 35. That soul winning begins with a speech. That's a myth. Listen carefully. Genuine soul winning begins with a smile. Matthew 9, verse 36. That only certain Christians are meant to be soul winners. That's the myth. For every Christian who claims to be filled with the Holy Spirit is obligated to witness. Again, that's Acts chapter 1, verse 8. That the soul winner upon encountering the unsaved will always be successful. That's a myth. Look at the example of Jesus as recorded in Matthew chapter 9, verses 21 and 22. That soul winning is a technique of burdensome drudgery. That's a myth. Real soul winning is an attitude of joy and commitment, for there is no greater joy than the joy a Christian receives bringing a lost soul to Christ. Psalms 126 verses 5 and 6. That effective soul winning can happen without the necessary, without the necessary element of prayer. And of course, that's the myth. James chapter 5 verse 16. All right, now uh, I want to deal with the three movements of evangelism and discipleship. The three movements of evangelism and discipleship. Movement number one, make sinners into converts. Movement number two, make converts into disciples. And movement number three, make disciples into soul winners. Let me go over those three major movements of evangelism and discipleship. Movement number one, make sinners into converts. Movement number two, make converts into disciples. And movement number three, make disciples into soul winners. Now, what is discipleship? Good question. What is discipleship? Discipleship is the process by which a saved person becomes a committed student, learner, and follower of Jesus Christ. John chapter 12, verse 26. I'm going to repeat. Discipleship is the process by which a saved person becomes a committed student, learner, and follower of Jesus Christ. Here are some important terms, uh, Greek terms, relative to this issue of discipleship. The first one is akolutheo. The Greek word that means to follow. It means specifically to follow Jesus by serving in the kingdom. Matthew 6, 33, Matthew 23, verse 11. It means to follow Jesus by walking in the light. John chapter 8, verse 12. It means to follow Jesus by being fully prepared to suffer as he did. Matthew 10, verse 24. John 15, verse 18, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Here we have another important Greek word, methetes. The Greek word, or this Greek word, means learner, pupil, disciple. It is the most uh, common Greek word used for the word disciple, methetes. And this word refers to a believer who is totally attached to their leader, Jesus Christ. John chapter 6, verses, 60, uh, verses 68 and 69, John chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, and John chapter 15, verse 5. There Jesus says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, I in him, the same uh, shall bring forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. Amen. A methetes, a true disciple, is a to Jesus Christ. This word also refers to a believer who is willing to unconditionally sacrifice their whole life and lifestyle for the sake of Christ. Matthew, excuse me, uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 33, Luke chapter 14, verse 33, 
and uh, Matthew chapter 10, verses 36 through 39. Here is another uh, important term, my metes, my metes. Uh, this is the Greek word that means imitator of a given leader. This word refers to a believer who displays and mirrors the nature of Christ. Please read John 13, 15, 1 Peter 2 and 21, Hebrews 3, verse 1, and 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. Conclusive remark, get this now. From the above definitions, we can see that true discipleship involves a believer who is so attached to Jesus that they are willing to unconditionally and sacrificially follow him and imitate him in thought, behavior, and especially in their lifestyle. Galatians chapter two, verse 20. Jesus and the issue of disciples. That is our next uh, issue we're gonna discover, uh, talk about. First of all, Jesus chose 12 disciples. We all know this, Mark chapter three, verses 14 through 19. Jesus had a wider circle of disciples other than the 12. That's found in John chapter 10, verse 16, John chapter 19, verse 38. Let's look at some biblical personalities who also had disciples. Jesus was not the only personality who had, a, who had disciples. We have some others. John the Baptist had disciples, Matthew 9, verse 14. The Pharisees had disciples, Mark chapter 2, verse 18. And Moses had disciples, John chapter 9, verse 14. 28. Now let's look at the role of the disciple maker. The first issue we must realize is that Jesus clearly told us to make disciples. He told us to make disciples. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 in the New International Version reads, therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The second issue we must uh, realize uh, is why disciple making is so important. Why is it so important disciple making? The answer is found in Matthew chapter 9 verses 37 and 38. Jesus essentially says that the harvest is plenteous and the laborers are few. We need more laborers. We need more disciples. The role of a disciple maker is to inspire and equip new believers to make a serious lifestyle commitment to follow Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 14, verse 33. Well, let's look at uh, seven traits of a disciple maker. Yeah, seven traits of a disciple maker. Dr. Waylon B. Moore, in his helpful book, Multiplying Disciples, insightfully says, and I quote, before you can disciple others, you must first be a disciple yourself. All right. Uh, let's also look at some biblical examples of disciple makers. Moses disciple Joshua. That's found in Deuteronomy 3, verses 27 and 28. Elijah Disciple Elisha, 1 Kings chapter uh, 19, uh, verses 19 through 21, 2 Kings uh, chapter 2, verse 9. And then, of course, Paul discipled Timothy, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse uh, 14, and 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Now, let's specifically look at uh, some of the uh, traits of a disciple. Maker. What are those traits? The disciple maker must be in love with Jesus. That's first and foremost. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 39, Psalm 31, verse 23, 1 John 4 and 16, and Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. The disciple maker uh, must be in love with people. You cannot, amen, disciple uh, people if you do not love people. John chapter 13, verse 35, John chapter 15, verse 12, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. The disciple maker must be energetic and enthusiastic. John chapter 4, verses 28 through 29, Psalm 47, verse 1, 1 Peter 4 and 13. The disciple maker must clearly display, uh-oh, the 
fruit of the Spirit. Must clearly display the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. John chapter 15, verse 8. The disciple maker must be grounded in the word of God. Matthew 22, verse 29, where Jesus says, ye do err, that is, you make a mistake, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power thereof. 2 Timothy 2 and 15, Psalm 119, verse 105. The disciple maker must be openly confident in the awesome power of God. Psalm 62, verse 11, Psalms 118, verses 8 and 9, Ephesians 6, verse 10, Matthew 28, verse 18. And then the, the disciple maker must be a prayer warrior. The disciple maker must be a prayer warrior. Luke chapter 6, verse 12, Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Luke chapter 22, verse 44. Now, Let's look at six characteristics of a true Christ-like disciple. I'm getting more specific. The true disciple has discipline. The true disciple has discipline. That is serious self-control. Luke 9, 23, Luke 14 and 27. Uh, 27. The true disciple displays agape, love. The true disciple displays agape love. And agape love is that kind of spiritual love that has another's best interest at heart. John chapter 13, verse 35. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 39. The true disciple displays humility. Matthew 23, verses 11 and 12. 1 Peter 5, verses 5 and 6. Next, the true disciple displays obedience. Matthew 7, verse 21. Matthew 12, verses 47 through 50. John 14, verse 15. And Acts chapter 5, verse 29. The true disciple loves and studies the word of God. John chapter 8, verse 31. Matthew 22, verse 29. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. And then finally, the true disciple bears fruit. The true disciple bears fruit. John chapter 15, verse 8, Matthew chapter 7, verse 20. Our next issue, an example of a disciple making session. Excuse me. A, an, an example of a disciple making class. Eight sessions. I'm going to go through eight sessions that comprise or could comprise of a disciple making class that you pastors can teach in your churches. The first session would deal with God's amazing grace and mercy. The, the objective of the session to make the new believer aware that they have only been saved and are currently being kept by the sheer grace and mercy of God. The key verse, uh, Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9, additional scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15 and 10, Romans 5 and 8, Psalms 86, verse 5, Ephesians 2 and 4. Session number two, the Sermon on the Mount. We're talking about any, uh, a discipleship class uh, with uh, eight sessions. This is session number two, the Sermon on the Mount. Objective of the session, to make the new believer aware of their identity, accountability, and rewards of living a lifestyle primarily based on and in Christ Jesus. The key verse, Matthew 7, verse 21, where Jesus says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Additional scriptures, Matthew uh, chapters five through seven. All those chapters, chapters five, chapter six, chapter seven. Session number three in our discipleship making class, the priority of agape love. Objective of the session, to make the new believer aware of the fact that agape love, love that has another's uh, best interest at heart, is the key sign of a follower of Christ. Agape love is the key sign of a true follower of Christ. Uh, the key verse being John chapter 13, 
verse 35. Additional scriptures, Matthew 22, verses 37 through 40, 1 John chapter 3, verse 14, 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, the great love chapter. Session number four, the significance of the fruit of the spirit. The objective of this session, to make the new believer aware of the fact that their character and personality should consistently reflect the fruit of the spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Additional scriptures, John 15, verses 5 through 8. Matthew 7, verses 16 through 20. Uh, session number five, the practice and necessity of prayer. The objective of this system, of this session rather, to make the new believer aware of the fact that just as a person must breathe to remain physically alive, the believer must pray to remain spiritually alive. All right, the key verse being Luke 18 and 1, additional scriptures, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, James chapter 5, verse 16, Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Session number six, the blessed discipline of tithing. Objective of this session, to make the new believer aware of the fact that A, tithing is a command of God, B, tithing is a discipline, and three, uh, C, rather, tithing brings forth great and multiple blessings. Uh, the key verse being Malachi 3, verses 8 through 10, additional scriptures, Matthew 23 and 23, uh, Leviticus 27 and 30, Proverbs 11 and 25. Session number seven, the benefits of God's word, the benefits of studying God's word. Yes, the benefit of studying God's word. Objective of the session, to make the new believer aware of the essentialness of studying and digesting the word of God. Second Timothy 3, verses 15 through 17, additional scriptures, 1 Peter 2, Psalms 119, uh, verse 130, John chapter 5, verse 39, John chapter 15, verse 3, Romans 15, verse 4. And then the final session, and we're going to close out here, session number eight, how to effectively witness. Objective of the session, to make the new believer aware of the fact that A, every Christian should be a soul winner, and B, soul winning pleases God greatly. Uh, the key verse, Proverbs 11, verse 30, um, it, where it says, he that when it souls is wise. Additional scriptures, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Luke chapter 15, verse 10, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. My brothers and sisters, uh, this ends our lecture on discipleship in the 21st century. Thank you again, uh, Dr. Angelus Wilson, for this opportunity to participate in the Angelos uh, Bible Institute. Thank you. Dr. Scott, thank you so much for that very, very informative and deep session on discipleship in the 21st century. And thank you for walking us through those teaching outlines in which we can continue to equip God's people mm -hmm. for the work of ministry. Mm -hmm. I'd like to uh, take just a moment, Dr. Yes, Scott, sir. if you don't mind, and walk through some of the resources that are available at manualscottjr.org. And uh, here we find uh, preaching videos, schedules of your attendances, where you'll be preaching your bio, popular lectures, mm -hmm. uh, ready or not, here I come. It's <laughs> help to be holy. Vital lessons for the from the virus. Thank All God. of these amazing, amazing lectures. Why don't you take just a few moments and walk us through your resource page and so that all the pastors and teachers and brothers and sisters who are watching, Christian educators, uh, might know uh, what your resource page is about. All right. And of course, uh, during this pandemic season, uh, I certainly would like to mention my lecture entitled Vital Lessons from the Virus, What God is Saying to Us Through This uh, COVID-19 Crisis. Um, as you know, because uh, you brought um, 
uh, a copy uh, of it, amen, along with so many other materials. And let me say thank you again for supporting us in that regard. We deal with 12 issues in that particular le uh, lecture, Vital Lessons from the Virus. Uh, first of all, we deal with the issue uh, that this is a season of exposure. During this pandemic, everything and everyone are being exposed for who they really are and for who they have always been. I've always maintained, Dr. Angelus, that um, sickness, uh, fame, fortune, um, money, um, crisis, uh, they do not change a person. They expose that person. Yes, those items do not change people. They expose people. I heard, once heard a preacher say that if you really want to see um, how crooked a crooked stick is, place it next to a straight stick. Amen. This is a season of exposure. And then uh, in that virus lecture, uh, I talk about uh, social distancing as a metaphor. We're told that during this season, we need to keep our distance, preferably six to 10 feet from each other in order to remain healthy. Well, Dr. Angelus, I maintain that after the pandemic is over, we got some folks who need to keep their distance from other folks, amen, if they're going to remain <laughs> spiritually healthy. Then we have another amen. issue here entitled, when the masks come off, when the masks come off, what uh, will that reveal about you being a real Christian? Amen. Praise be to God. So that's just a commentary on that particular lecture. All the other ones are almost self-explanatory. The church in crisis. Oh my God. Uh, I talk about why we're in crisis uh, today. One reason is that we were suffering uh, from amnesia, spiritual amnesia. Amen. And I'm working on a, a work currently right now. In fact, actually a sermon entitled Identifying the Thesis. What is the central point of the gospel? What is the main thrust of the gospel? And before I go into the specifics, I talk about uh, that we have too many uh, leaders in our church who are suffering from thesis amnesia. They're suffering from thesis amnesia. Amen. In other words, they are kingdom and charisma fugitives. Amen. They've left the heart of the gospel. Amen. And it has made uh, tragically uh, a difference um, uh, in the kingdom. Uh, praise be to God. Uh, we have to get back to the basics. We must get back uh, to the basics. I let you what's up. Uh, praise be to God. We deal with uh, all kinds of issues, homosexuality, um, uh, tattoos, and what have you, gangster rap music, um, and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, but all of these lectures, uh, praise be to God, are relevant. A lecture for our preachers, uh, 12 commandments that every young preacher should follow. Uh, that mm -hmm. is very, very helpful from what the men have been telling me and so forth and, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Dr. Scott, thank you so much for the plethora of resources and uh, the years of your scholarship and your research and all of the exegetical preaching, biblical preaching and teaching that you have provided for us as you equip us for the work of the ministry. Well, I wanna thank you again on behalf of the Institute faculty, the staff and all the sister church that make up this uh, biblical organization to help equip the saints for the work of the ministry. We are not through brothers and sisters. We are coming back for session three and four which will happen on uh, the 11th of this month, right here, uh, right on the Angelos Biblical Institute YouTube page. So again, Dr. Scott will be back with us, but do not dally. Once again, beloved, once again, if you are looking at this site, why don't you do yourself a favor and come to this page, manuelscottjr.org, manuelscottjr.org, and do this today. Go there and schedule. Get him to come to your city, to your conference, to mm -hmm. your local church. You mm -hmm. will be blessed greatly from his work, his ministry, and all that God has done through him. This is going to end our time for the day, but we want to go out with just a taste of worship. 
with Dr. Emmanuel Scott. How many of you here today know that in spite of it all, God has smiled on you? I need to see some hands here. I need to see some hands. Come on, the choir's going to help us sing. Let's lift up our voices and sing together. God has. Oh, God. God has smiled on me. Oh, me free. Oh, God has smiled on me. He's been, been good. Let's wave our hands and sing. Well, God, God has smiled on me. Turn around and shake the hands of three people. Sing to them, God. Come on, brothers. God, mighty, mighty good. Well, he set me free. Sound mighty good, brothers. Sound mighty good. God has smiled on me. He's been, been good. All right, just the sisters, just the sisters. Let me hear you, sisters. All right, here, all right, here. Our Father and our God, we're grateful today for the divine privilege that we have had to sit at the feet of this great preacher. Thank you so much for what we've learned today about discipleship in the 21st century. Bless us now as we depart the conference on today. Be with us, Lord, until we meet again at the next appointed time where we will again sit under the authority of your word to be encouraged, equipped, and empowered to evangelize for the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Dr. Scott, thank you so much for being with us and blessing God. the Institute on the day. God, God bless, bless you. Man. God bless you. Look, 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 Angels, let me ask you, um, 